data has been a huge part of this play for a really long time. And now we're giving away more of our data than ever and more intimate parts of our data. And now they have tools that use that data that can do awful things if we let them. And it doesn't mean we have to live without AI or any of this stuff. Like if you want to use it, okay. But we have to divest from big tech AI because they are trying to use AI to turn us into a like un giant underclass of subhumans who, I mean, this Kissinger exactly. Schmidt book is so crazy and I encourage everyone to read it because they literally lay out that it's going to create neo-feudalism. They don't use that term. But basically they say there will be two classes of people. There will be the people that program and maintain and set the objective functions of AI. And then there will be the people that AI acts upon who lose the ability to understand what AI is doing to them. That's neo-feudalism, but like for, obviously it's big tech and everyone else is essentially what that is. And the people who set the objective function, I'm sure will be like existing oligarchs and existing power elites. Yeah. Well, once that system's in place, you're not going to break and get into the, the top tier. Like, that's over. In today's digital age, data has become more than just information. It's a currency, and we're spending it more liberally than ever before. Whitney Webb's insights shed light on a concerning trajectory where AI, backed by big tech, threatens to bifurcate society into two distinct classes those who control AI and those controlled by it. This echoes historical patterns of power consolidation, but with a modern digital twist. The potential for a neo-feudal society, powered by AI, raises profound ethical and societal questions. It's crucial to understand that this isn't just about technological advancement, but about who holds the power to shape our future. The idea that AI could render vast swathes of the population powerless, or worse, irrelevant, is a chilling prospect. The call to divest from big tech's AI isn't just about resisting control. It's about reclaiming our autonomy and ensuring that the future of AI aligns with the broader interests of humanity, not just those of the elite. If you found the insights from Whitney Webb thought-provoking, you're in the right place. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and like this video to stay updated with our latest content. AI will act on you, will ma manipulate you in ways you don't understand, and you won't be able to tell what's real in what's not and that AI, well, first of all, AI hallucinates, like that's the term. It like will produce output that isn't even real and doesn't exist. And they argue in this book that AI will push us into this era of unseen realities and that only AI can see. And we should trust that those are real because AI is super smart. Yeah. And, and, and so they, AI I mean, this is like matrix AI. level shit to an insane degree. It really truly is. There's a reason they've been so successful. It's because they've made us so dependent on specifically big tech tech. And mm -hmm. it's very hard to drop that like that, especially when you have like mm -hmm. businesses to consider that are like so entrenched with that a lot of the time. But if you are a company that wants to stand for freedom and specifically financial freedom, you must move away. You must have a plan to move away because I mean, what's happening. I mean, take Microsoft as an example, which basically is open AI at this point. Um, they've basically said, okay, you have a windows system. Your data on there is tied to your Microsoft account. If you lose access to your Microsoft account or we block you from your Microsoft account, you lose all of your data yeah, on your own computer. Good. And at the same time, you have no right to say no to them uploading all of the data, all of your data on your computer to feed their AI, which presumably will include open AI. So your data is not even your data anymore with Microsoft. Yeah. The most important thing here is divest from big tech, specifically like the big four, the ones that are contractors with the national security state and have essentially fused with the national security state. So like Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Oracle, like all the big ones, Facebook, like all the big ones that are like obvious, have like obvious documentable intelligence connections from their beginnings to now, you know? Like those are the ones to avoid that we should not, definitely not be using. And I think also um, something that needs to happen is that like supporting that kind of stuff and saying like, oh, we shouldn't divest, like don't be a martyr and don't fight the system, whether it's like for Bitcoin or like big tech or whatever, like that needs to become culturally unpopular for people who actually care about like individual freedom and protecting right. it.
like that stuff should be called out for what it is, whether the, the people saying it like know it or not, then give them the opportunity to be educated about it. There's a lot of infiltration going on right now to get people to acquiesce to this kind of stuff or saying it's inevitable or saying it will be good for you or you little guy will become part of the privileged class. That's all fake. And that's not what's going to happen. It's and just to get you to be complacent and not to do anything about what they're doing. The other thing here that's also highlighted in this Kissinger Schmidt book is like, if people become dependent on AI, it doesn't really matter if it's open source or not. People then become what they talk about in their book, cognitively diminished. The, the whole idea, it doesn't even, I mean, it existed before AI. If you don't use it, you lose it. Like any type of skill, right? So like most of us, right, were, I don't know, in college 10 years ago. Like, do you remember everything you took then? specifically the stuff you haven't used since, like probably not. Like that is a real thing that happens with the human brain. You know what I mean? You know, if you use ChatGPT for a few things and like certain cases, okay. But like if you're using it for everything to the point where like you don't, you've gone a year without actually writing your own article and you're like a journalist or something and you're using ChatGPT to generate it all for you, you're going to go to try and write without GPT and you're going to find it really hard. Like that's what Kissinger and Schmidt are talking about. And that's what they want to happen. And, and, and not just in the case of chat GPT in terms of like the algorithms, like dictating your preferences, right? Things like that, you know, or, or dictating like where you go and what you do, like the suggestion stuff, like by algorithms and all of that, like you won't even be able to, make basic decisions based on your own preferences anymore. Like that's what they're talking about. So like all this stuff with AI is a slippery slope. Obviously open source is better than big tech, but people also have to like engage with this technology responsibility uh, responsibly um, because these guys are very aware uh, and we should be aware too, that it can have very negative impacts on human cognition and we need our critical thinking skills to get through this. The narrative around AI isn't just about the technology. It's about control, manipulation, and the shaping of reality. As Whitney Webb discusses, the danger lies not only in the AI's ability to hallucinate, but in its deployment by those with the power to decide what's real and what's not for the rest of us. This manipulation extends beyond mere misinformation. It's about constructing a new reality where AI's word is the ultimate truth. However, there's a glimmer of hope in the form of open source AI. The rise of open source models challenges the monopoly of big tech and offers a path towards democratizing AI. This shift isn't just technical. It's fundamentally about who controls the narrative and the tools that shape our world. The encouragement to transition to open source AI is a call to action for those who value digital freedom and autonomy. It's about creating a technology ecosystem that serves the many, not just the few. This discussion is more than theoretical. It's about real choices companies and individuals face today. Choosing open source AI isn't just a technical decision. It's a stand for ethical technology use and a move against the consolidation of power in the digital realm. People need to be aware of the risks. So a, a lot of stuff like when I focus on AI, specifically stuff like where hallucination, AI hallucinations come into play. I mean, they're trying to put AI in charge of like major decisions, not just like who lives and who dies, uh, but stuff like facial recognition. And like in the UK, there was like sort of a mini scandal because like the Met Police were using like these live uh, facial recognition algorithms and they were like super inaccurate um, and like flagging people to like pull out of crowds and stuff. But it was like, insanely inaccurate. And also there's been a long problem recognized for a long time that a lot of these AI um, facial recognition uh, algorithms like used by law enforcement are super like racially biased, for example, right? Um, um, among other issues. And they like in the UK, like just didn't want to change it. They're like, yeah, we know it's inaccurate. So what? I mean, what is that really about then? Well, um, I forget his first name, but there's this famous like philosopher, Foucault, uh, who, you know, wrote about like, you know, control and the panopticon and all of this stuff. He's like a big inspiration for the Palantir guys. Like when the New York mm -hmm. Times had this big spread about Palantir, they like posed under Foucault's portrait and stuff. The idea of like his panopticon is like, you know, just the the feeling that you're being watched by the state will make you behave. You know, it's not about like the AI being accurate necessarily it's about like everyone knowing they're being watched and they could be plucked out of that crowd at a moment's notice and to get in line you know that's the kind of stuff they're trying to create so like 
in my opinion, that AI cannot be fed and cannot be supported. And it's the big tech companies making that AI, AI starve them of your data or feed them garbage data if you have the capability to do that. You know, mm-hmm. like those should be opposed 100%. Mm-hmm. You know, and the problem is here with like open AI, you know, that's Microsoft. Microsoft is so in bed with all of this stuff, dude. I mean, come on, it's Bill Gates' company. It was super compromised by Epstein in the 90s. No one wants to talk about that. That's why they lie and say that Bill Gates and Epstein didn't meet until 2011 when he was no longer like running stuff at Microsoft. Even though there's news articles in mainstream media saying in 2001 that Epstein made a bunch of his money in the 90s from Bill Gates. Oh, but they didn't meet ten, until 10 years later. It makes no sense, right? So like they're covering for Microsoft has been so compromised and tied up with intelligence for years and years and years. Not good for anybody. And they're basically uh, trying to get their new election software, election guard and ins- installed all over the US. They're responsible for NewsGuard, part of this crazy censorship industrial complex that's just totally insane and all this other stuff. Like they're a lot more than just a big tech company. They're involved in a lot of very bad things and they're uh, a dominant market player. I mean, Windows is used by like, not everyone, but like a dominant amount of the world, right? I mean, same with Google, Um, but we have to break into that. I mean, we have to make the choice to not support that. Like even if you're just the one person or you feel like you're one person doing that, like it's, it's an important decision to make and hopefully other people will make that decision. But like, I don't know. I look at, at sort of like a karmic angle. Like I don't want to feed that. I know it's bad. And if I continue to feed it just because of convenience, like that's not going to be good for me long-term. I mean, that's how I feel about it personally. I mean, obviously people may not look at it that same way. Yeah. But again, I mean, those same people that end up relying on this stuff and big tech stuff, big tech products are being designed to herd you into this world as outlined by Kissinger and Schmidt. Yeah. So no, I completely agree. stop using it, you know, yeah. um, I mean, and they're putting this stuff in charge of, you know, who goes to prison, who stays free, who lives and who dies, uh, who gets visited by the, you know, vaccine people and who doesn't, I mean, whatever. I mean, it, it, it's it's all there. Like the biosecurity agenda is still definitely like a thing going on, even if it's like kind of on the back burner now. I mean, there's all this crazy stuff happening and it, they need AI for all of it, just in terms of like scalability. You know, they want to put like an insane amount of people under their thumb and they're a small group of people like we've talked about and they're losing, they're hemorrhaging trust and have been for years. How People need to really think about how to fight against this and understand what the risks are. And it, it starts off with individual and personal responsibility. And it starts off with building alternatives and being local and unplugging occasionally and doing real stuff. Whitney Webb's insights into the misuse of AI, from facial recognition scandals to the creation of a surveillance state, underscore the urgency of the situation. The reference to philosopher Foucault's idea of the panopticon illustrates how modern technology can be used to foster a sense of constant surveillance altering behavior through the mere perception of being watched. The call to action is clear. We must be vigilant about the technology we use and support. It's not just about avoiding big tech's products. It's about actively seeking alternatives that align with ethical standards and respect for personal data. The shift towards open source AI and the rejection of platforms that misuse our data are steps towards reclaiming control in a digital landscape, increasingly characterized by manipulation and surveillance. Thank you for joining us on Unscripted Crypto. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video if you believe in a more ethical, open-source digital future.